hoo hoo hoo. I'm excited for this one, y'all. Bianca, welcome back to my channel. Here on my channel, I'll talk a little bit about this and I'll talk a little bit about that. So if that sounds like something you're interested, please stay tuned for this whole video. So, okay, I've been wanting to talk about this movie ever since I saw it last week. And you guys, I it might be a little bit controversial. Uh, some people might not gonna like it, but hey, that's my opinion. That's the internet for you, right? So first, I'm gonna give you a summary. Yes, there's gonna be spoilers, so if you don't want to see that, click out of this video and then come back once you're done watching the movie. And then I'm going to give my opinion and say how I would have made this movie better, in my opinion. There was a lot of drama and controversy around it because apparently Shia LaBeouf was supposed to be the main lead, but then like during the beginning of it, they switched out with Harry Styles, and Harry Styles is dating the director. But I'm not gonna talk about all that because I'm just not interested in it. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to give my thoughts on what the director wanted to go with this movie and how she kind of wanted to plan it. Because what she had to say about it was a little bit interesting and I do want to talk about it because I do have some thoughts about it. So let's get right into it. Alright, the movie we're talking about today is Don't Worry Darling. And the main leads are going to be Florence Pugh and Harry Styles. There are other couples living in this area, but the couple that we focus on most, like I said, was Alice and Jack. In the beginning, we see Alice saying bye to Jack. And then almost in a cult-like way, you see all the other husbands in the neighborhood all get in the same car and pretty much drive off together. And the wives pretty much just stay home and clean, shop, hang out with each other, things like that. And besides everyone acting kind of in the same way, everything's pretty much normal. The men come back home and then the next day they start over. And one of the rules here though in this victory place is that they're not talk, they're not allowed to talk about the men's work. Everyone are, is under the suspicion that they just make like these things for the government, but none of the wives really know what's going on besides the men. They also have this boss named Frank who seems like he's the head honcho. A lot of the men there, they really look up to him and almost treat him like a god in a way if that makes sense like they're all seeking his approval whenever he speaks they're all like all eyes on him they have all his attention and it's just a little bit weird and every now and then we see alice you know having these weird visions little glitches here and there that just don't make sense uh she cracks an egg one time and there's no yolk she sees a plant in the sky like just a lot of weird things at a party all the wives are talking but then you hear of this girl margaret and apparently margaret had a son and they took them to the desert because one of the rules there is that you're not allowed to go to the desert neither. But she takes her son there and she says when she comes back, they said that they took in her son. And then pretty much everyone's kind of outcasting Margaret at this point. Her husband says there's something wrong with her but that she's on pills. But then Alice sees her sitting down and saying things like, oh, we don't belong here. They're lying to us. And then of course Margaret's husband steps in and like, oh, like she's just not feeling well. And then Alice kind of leaves it at that. And but from but from that moment on, Alice starts noticing things that just don't start to add up. One day she gets on a bus and she gets on a bus and she sees a plane crashing. And Alice is intrigued by this because she's like, oh my gosh, well, there's people on there, we gotta go help them. So she goes off into the desert by herself and then she keeps wandering, wandering till she reaches like this house, I guess you would call it. She goes on there, touches the glass, she has like more weird visions and then she wakes up back in her house in bed. She wakes up and she sees Jack there cooking them dinner and she's like, have I been there this whole time? And Jack was like, yeah, like you've been sleeping. With all these events adding up, Alice starts feeling like, you know, yeah, something's wrong here, something's going on. One day, she's outside and she sees Margaret on top of the roof and Margaret underlives herself and Alice sees the whole thing and there's these men in red suits that come and take her away. I don't know what the purpose of them. I guess they're the victory security. That's how they describe them as. And you know, Alice tells Jack like, hey, I saw Margaret on her life herself, like something is going on. And Jack was like, no, no, like she just, she was cleaning the windows and she fell off the roof, you know, like kind of played it off. And you know, but since Alice saw something traumatic, she ends up seeing the doctor there of Victory. And he is like, oh, well, I think you should take taking these pills. Um, mass hysteria can happen with seeing something traumatic like that. And Alice is like, no, I don't need pills. And then, you know, the doctor keeps pushing it until Jack says like, no, like she doesn't need them. 
However, Alice managed to steal Margaret's file and a lot of things are blacked out. So, and you know, Alice is getting more like paranoid about it, more worried. She's like, you know, something's not adding up. The head guy, Frank, decides to throw a party where he's celebrating Jack for, I guess, being loyal to him. And they do this weird chat thing. Like, Whose world is it? But at that party, Alice decides to tell her best friend, Bunny, like, hey, we don't belong here. They're trapping us here because, you know, she's, something's off. And Bunny pretty much disregards her and tells her like, hey, you're sounding like Margaret, like you need to quit. Alice and Jack end up throwing a party to celebrate Jack's promotion. And while Alice is cooking dinner, Frank, the head guy, comes up to her and pretty much confirms everything she was believing. He says that, you know, every strong leader needs a strong appointment to oppose him. And so, you know, Alice is like, oh, like, holy shit. Like, he pretty much confirmed what I wanted to say. Something's not right here. So while they're having this dinner party, Alice starts asking questions and then they end up finding out that a lot of them met at the same places or like places close to it, they vacation at the same place, but none of them can remember anything before the time in, in victory. And pretty much she scares everyone and Frank tells her like, oh no, she's delusional, the same thing we saw with Margaret. And so, you know, pretty much blows off everything that she says. At this point, everyone leaves because, you know, everyone's frantic and they're like, oh, you know, what the hell is going on? And Alice tells Jack, like, please, Jack, like, let's leave. I don't want to be here anymore. Something's wrong. And we see Jack looks like agreeing with her. So they get in the car. But it turns out Jack pretty much just tricks her. So that way the men in red come and take her. And at this point, we can see that pretty much all this was just a virtual reality. In real life, Alice is a doctor, her and Jack are in a relationship, but it seems like Jack had lost his job recently, so she was the main breadwinner, and it looks like they have a lot of strain on the relationship when she gets home, like they're not very lovey-dovey like they are in the virtual world, so you know there's some problems going on. But she snaps back into the virtual world, and we see her, you know, done with her treatment. She's all cured now. It seems like she doesn't remember anything and things pretty much go back to normal. Alice is walking in and he, she hears Jack singing this song that she's been singing and apparently it was their song. So when she hears that, she gets all her memories back. She tells Jack like, you know, like you brought me here and they have this fight. Jack saying, oh, I did this for you and gave this to you. Alice didn't have a choice in this. He drugged her, brought her to this facility and pretty much took her in her life that she didn't want because she didn't choose it. She ends up killing Jack and then the whole thing goes to shit. We end up finding out that Bunny knew everything. She chose to be there because in the real world she lost her kids. So in this world she has her kids back she, even though she knows they're not real. But you know I guess it's when you're in grief anything is better than nothing. And she helps Alice get away. And then we see this car scene into the desert and then pretty much that first house that she went to when she saw that plane crash she goes back into there and then that's how the movie ends you know i went into this like with the open mind and i ended up really liking it. i thought it was a cool thriller movie it really got me on the edge of my seat and it's a two hour long movie but it didn't feel that long for me and like because you know i was like okay what's gonna happen next what's gonna happen next and i'm not saying this is the best movie no of course that's not what i'm saying but all the reviews i've seen and like you know the score has gone in like everyone has rated it really low or really bad or they say it's a mess this is and that but I ended up really liking it. As I said, I'm gonna talk about what the director intended this movie to be, but right now I'm just gonna talk about how I saw it as, you know, the viewer, the consumer, you know, seeing my perspective on it and my take on it. I would have thought this movie would have been a lot better if it was like a romance thriller type of movie. Because we see throughout the movie that Jack and Alice really do care for each other and they have a good connection and it looks like they love each other. So my take on this movie, it would have been better if, say, Alice and Jack, you know, they're having these problems, right? Because every relationship has problems. Keep that in there. You know, they're really struggling because, you know, one partner wasn't working and the other one was making more of the money. So let's go with that. Let's say that Frank is a therapist. They go see this therapist and Frank offers them, yes, hey, Try this virtual reality treatment, it's experimental right now, but hey, try it out for two weeks and I promise you, when you come out, you guys will be better than ever, your relationship will be fixed, and you know, lure them in that way. And then the plot twist would be that once they got in there, they will lose their memories, you know, keep everything the same, that they don't remember anything past their life. But after the two weeks are done, we can still make Jack an evil person too, and Frank comes up to Jack and not ask, be like, hey, your two weeks is up. 
but I see y'all you're all happy like don't you feel happy like don't you guys feel good how about you guys just stay here but you have to come work for me in the real world and you know this will be our secret and so you know Jag being desperate to want to keep his relationship together he agrees to Frank's plan and then you know the movie can still play out from there I think that would have fit this narrative a lot better because the whole like drugging her like you know like in the real world like what what do they think happened to Alice that she just dead or something like like you know what I mean just like little things like that I feel like would have fixed the plot a lot more and I think it's interesting that you know Bunny knew this whole time and that she chose chose that you know like I said because that makes a lot more sense because how does one girl keep her memories but the other ones don't like you know like how do how do they control that so with the whole there like you know Frank being a therapist I feel like that would have been a perfect way to explain why you know Bunny could keep her her memories because she knows she wanted this completely but those are just my two cents into it let's go into what uh, Olivia Wilde the director of this movie and also the person who played Bunny had to say about this movie Um, which has obviously been present throughout fascist philosophy for a long time. And the movie is trying to suggest that if we try to control people, that it doesn't lead us to that utopian end. It doesn't actually work because it's not human nature. Um, it's the same reason that, you know, we try to tame nature to control it. That's why this world is by design in the middle of a desert. It's a man-made oasis. There's a reason we didn't shoot this in the, you know, lush, beautiful hills of Italy, where it's a celebration of, of Mother Nature. Um, and it, it's, uh, yeah, so by design we're saying, that chaos is actually something organic and that trying to control humanity is never um, a good idea. As Olivia Wilde stated in that clip, she said that the whole point of this movie was to show, you know, as she mentioned, that chaos is natural. You can't control humanity. There's, uh, we've seen, you know, multiple times in history that it doesn't work out when one person tries to control a whole group of people because we're all just so different and we have our own individual personalities and, you know, so that's something that's not can't be controlled. I didn't want to make this video political, but it's going to get a little bit political. It's going to get a little bit political, so please just hang on there with me for a second. Olivia Wilde has stated in a Entertainment Weekly article, and I quote, We had a bunch of Trump quotes up on our board when we were writing the script, and there was this gross tendency of Trump's to be very nostalgic about a better time, Wilde said in the new cover interview with Elle published Thursday. What these men are referring to is a time that was horrific for anyone who wasn't a straight white cis man. And with all this being said, the reason I, you know, brought up those quotes she said that is that she wants to say that the phrase, you know, Trump was promoting make America great again was referring to a time where men were in control of everything. And doing my research for this movie, I wanted to know, okay, well, what did Trump really mean? Because she can't say that and that's how she can interpret it. But what did he really say when he meant by this? And according to his article, Trump had his own definition of what he meant, but what Make America Great Again meant. And he says, and I quote, I felt that drops were hurting, he said. I looked at the many types of illnesses our country had and whether it's at the border, whether it's security, whether it's law and order or lack of law and order. Then of course you get to the trade and I said to myself, what would be good? I was sitting at my desk where I am right now and I said, make America great again. Later on he says, it actually inspired me, Trump said, because to me it meant jobs, it meant industry, and it meant military strength. It meant taking care of our veterans, it meant so much. There are men and there, but there's also women who think that way that, oh, we, we need to go back to the time where women just stayed home and did this and that and the men went out of the job and did, did this. But I didn't like the narrative that she pushed that she, Trump was the reason why, why you know, you know, based on his quote, make America great again, that he was referring back to a horrible time. And you, and you saw by his quote that that's not what he meant at all. He, he didn't mean to go back to gender roles. He didn't mean to go back to slavery. He just wanted to America to be fully dependent on themselves and no one else. Like I'm just tired of always having it's either you're this side or this side and that's it. And I'm tired of the streams. Okay, you're extreme Republican or you're extreme Democrat. Like, no, like. That you can be a little bit of both. We can meet in the middle. It doesn't always have to be the one side versus against the other side. And so the reason I bring this up is that, you know, if she wanted to make this movie with that thought in mind, you would think she would have made, you know, the, she would have made the, the relationships a little bit more abusive. I hate saying that word, but you know, really having the men can take control over everything. And we just don't see that in this movie. And I also think it has to do with that her boyfriend who was Harry Styles it was the main lead and I and I believe this is just my opinion don't come for me that she didn't want to see him in the bad light that she still wanted to put him in a good light 
which that's why I say like I think it's weird you know when they have directors and co-stars dating and stuff because it can affect the film and then we can't see the picture that the director wanted all right so I'm done with all my political talk that's just what I wanted to say that's something I just wanted to mention I like this movie I give it a 5 out of 10 would I watch it again mm, maybe if you know, I was seeing it with a family member who hasn't seen it before with a friend. But on my own time, I wouldn't watch it again. But like I said, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great neither. It was just one of those movies that I enjoyed watching while I did. And I think that Flores Pugh and Chris Pine blew, blew it with their acting. They were giving the 110%. I thought the scenery was beautiful, all the images, the clothes. Like they really did, you know, their research for this 1950s movie. And I guess Olivia Wilde did do her job at the end. She wanted to have a discussion and she got people talking and I guess she succeeded, right? <laughs> All right, and that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you liked this video, please give it a like and share it. And if you didn't like it, let me know down in the comments. Let's have a little talk about it. Let's have a discussion about it. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, it is okay. I understand. You have to, you know, feel me. I got to check out my vibes, see what I'm about. So go ahead. Once you're done with this video, go check out my other videos. And you might be surprised to find something that you like. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.